in this, they probably just aren't making the major. It, th Yikes. This match in particular. So this is so important for them, and I would... I don't feel like they can... F I just feel like they can't lose when they know that much is on the line. Mm. But G2 has just been preparing so well in every tournament that they've been at. I, I'm i going to give it to G2. I'm going to okay. give it to G2. Well, it sounds like we're going to have a good match on our hands regardless. And T-side for Fnatic. They'll already get the bomb planted outer. And... It's actually kind of interesting. No one's died just yet. G2 have decided to void that A-bomb side in favor of being able to attack all together and coordinate this push to try and make sure that they can win this round. And it's going to be tough for Fnatic here, but four players towards Ivy, actually. When do you see that on a pistol round? We'll see if G2 can actually break that position. Because Golden's in that camera spot. There's more players to worry about. Brings out the burst from the Glock. Does manage to slow them down for a, a short time. But JW lurking up in heaven is causing all kinds of problems here at the top of that ladder. And he's going to finish things off. And there you go. Fnatic pick up the pistol on their T side. Which is, considering it's their map pick, and I feel like a must-win map for them, <laughs> is a good start for Fnatic. I think that's the third time Fnatic has been outside on their pistol, on their T pistol. So all three times that we've seen Fnatic, that's uh, they go outside. They love to go outside pistol. So I will like how. Oh, I was going to say, will they do it the fourth time? Oh, the next yeah. time we see them, if we see them, I don't know. I like how when a player turns on burst fire on their Glock, it's like they <laughs> switch weapons or something. <laughs> it's like a completely different look for the weapon <laughs> for the gun. <sighs> Too bad Golden wasn't able to make it work, but... I had like 15 HP. <laughs> You'll make the jumping AK work, okay. Makes it easy. Makes it easy for your team. That looks like a pretty standard eco, nothing happy too much. It'd be great if Panic does not lose a person. Keep that flawless victory. Amnex probably going to save the AWP, or not AWP, the scout for next round. Look at the, the gloves and the deagle combo there. That's a really good color coordination. I'm not usually one that's like, let's have exactly the same color of everything, but the the gloves break it up nicely, actually, with the, the black and the gloves. It's actually yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty sexy. I like it. And, and I feel like there's not a lot of green stuff in terms of the skins like this, so it's actually kind of unusual. You'd think that there'd be more yeah. green stuff because it's the like camouflage, you know? The, it's a prime color. Yeah, prime color. Yeah. Well, this was kind of cool to see. The way that Fnatic just barreled outside on their anti force by no fear actually very confident and it, it well they didn't lose a single player that's actually pretty amazing uh especially for their economy but for g2 they are in the doldrums right now having to i mean they managed to save that scout actually have a couple of HEs, so they may be able to get something going in this round in terms of damage but it really feels like they have to get at least a couple kills here given that they got no economic damage in that previous round yeah, they need to keep the Fnatic economy a little bit more honest on this. All of these players staying alive is not a great look for them. That being said, it will be quite hard. We'll see what uh what these nades are directed at, though. Yeah, I was wondering. It doesn't seem like it'll actually even be a joint effort on them. I think one has already been used. Yeah. Um, Just waiting to use that nade, you know? As soon as his teammate sees anything... Tell me when. Just tell is me when. Is there someone spotting Tcon? Is is uh, no. is Jax? Oh wait, two. Jax might two. be spotting. Oh no, he's. Yeah, he's just like doing the elbow peek here and there. Okay. Well, that that'll give them enough information for the nade. It looks like they'll be keeping it towards B now. So if Fnatic do go for a B plant, which it doesn't look like they're posturing towards, that could work out for them. But already another nade has been used, and Fnatic are doing a good job here, just keeping it. A slow round. The nade finally does come out. Okay, actually, that's some great damage coming out from them. Flusha, though, still able to take down Jax. Pushing on forward is Brawlin as he finds Kenny S. And still, G2, they really just need a couple kills here. That's the main thing. Okay, Nex is able to get one. Can Omenek follow up? All these players are tagged, so he has a great chance, actually. Takes down Flusha there. Looking for more from the Ivy position now. Scaling on up. But he'll be met by a nice shot from Krims. That is... Still okay. That's still okay. They, that's uh, that's not a win, but it's what you're what you're not upset about if you're G2. So little small little tell right there. I don't know. I mean, this seems probably pretty common, but saw G2 toss their nades by Red and E box more than towards T middle. I'm kind of thinking that maybe they watch um, Fnatic and kind of know that they take E box a lot, a lot as they're taking outside. 
Perm Tecon, so it's <laughs> a good thing to see. It's early smokes in the round for outside as JW try to get to that E box that we talked about, but G2 is ready. Wow. Fnatic is running out here, and that's the, that's that's Fnatic style. Sometimes they just run out, and they're very unpredictable in that way. Cribs will manage to take down Nexa as well, so that's actually pretty amazing. That's uh. They managed to sacrifice one player and gain so much from it. Crims, though, he may not suspect this push there. The swing from 1G, and Crims will go down. And Amonek's trying to do even more damage. He's claimed so much forward ground now for his teammates to go for the retake. And Hunter's going to be able to pick off Golden as well. Flasher, a really important kill, but there is that flank coming through from Jax. And G2 will be able to win this round. But interestingly, Fnatic may have set themselves up pretty well here. They got three kills. They got a bomb down. And G2's going to be on the ropes from a money point of view, so G2 must win this next round. Those are the exact kind of gun rounds you almost hate to win and then see your money afterwards. You look at G2's economy now, and they're going to be strapped for cash on a few other players here. One of the players probably will have to be buying a FAMAS or SMG. Looks like it'll be a FAMAS on Amonek there. That was dropped, but yeah, the, the MP9 coming out from Nexa as well. It, it makes winning the second round so difficult, and then your money is just in such a bad place. Sometimes I feel like I'd rather ha well, and a lot of times I feel like I'd rather have the MP9 over the FAMAS because with a FAMAS I feel like I'm taking duels against people who have rifles and they'll always have a better rifle than me. And so, unless you have a really good angle or nade, nade support or a team play setup, it's, it just doesn't feel as comfortable at all. That's a good point, Dan. If you want MP9, you're up and close and personal. You yeah. see the white of their eyes. Yeah, you actually can have some weapon advantages with an MP9 versus an AK in certain swings and so on. And so on. So it's uh, either way, it will be an initial uh, pick here from Fnatic. So G2's life is looking extremely bad right now. They may have to make some drastic choices in how they handle their guns. Do they try to stack uh, uh, stack somewhere? Or, well, they have actually got to push here towards Team Main from Jax. He could actually swing this round back. It is on Jax to do so. He has the AK-47, a great off angle to work with as he waits for the T's to make the push. Oh no, Brolin will take him down. And maybe Brolin also took down GT's best chance in this round. Hunter still on the bomb site though. Fnatic quickly scaling all over outside. And there's a double flank actually coming out from G2, but how effective will this be? It looks like Flusha already took care of it, and Hunter on the bomb site, taken down by Brawlin as well. Nexa at this point just wants to save this AK. 1v4 situation, no real hope here. Fnatic only looking really good on their T side. Last time these two teams met, it was kind of hard. It, um, Fnatic was struggling to get rounds, but now they're already up 4-1, to one and G2 probably wondering what the heck's going on here. The Fnatic's really doing pretty well of following these holes and pockets and really getting the entry kills to open up these bomb sites. But obviously, if you get an entry kill, it's always good, right? But it doesn't seem like Fnatic's changing too much of their strategy either. I, I, it just feels like Fnatic, in some of the same looks that they had last time around versus G2, are coming out ahead in ways that they lost. And that's just kind of the individuals from the team running a similar game plan but are still able to make that same old plan work. It's a little bit slower, I would say. It's a little bit more cautious on the side of Fnatic. They aren't running into the nade stacks from G2. They aren't just swinging out extra wide. Maybe just, just like that slight change in some of their stances has helped them out tremendously. Curious, did Flush and not buy armor because he's doing flush of things or did he just oh. completely forgot? He probably forgot, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> you, never, that's not <laughs> <laughs> you never want to not buy armor. Uh-oh. Oh. Well, they are looking to get in here. Oh, that's an important kill. <laughs> that's an important kill to make clean, at least. So, I guess G2 can just try to hold on to this AK. I think it really is the CTs on train. It's one of those maps where you definitely want to look after your own economy on, on the CT side more than you're thinking about damaging the T economy. I think in most cases, so keeping that AK alive is really important. Oh dear. Okay. Crims will go down. Jack's denied the weapon though. Flusher, no Kevlar required. Fnatic look really focused right now, and, and it's really cool to see how they're mixing up the pace. Their pacing has been uh, drastically different uh, round to round. They've, they've mixed in some extremely slow rounds, 
and they've also mixed in some f kind of faster contact rounds where it looks like they're attacking everything at once, very Fnatic-esque. But we haven't seen too much from outside smokes yet. That's, that's something that we haven't seen too much of. We haven't seen really any Ivy pressure either. So those are the two things that come to my mind uh, the most right now. Yeah, Fnatic's been tossing a couple flashbangs and maybe one smoke outside to kind of bait the early utility from G2. But it's kind of, it's, uh, Fnatic's doing a good job of masking their true intentions a lot of times. Just, you know, tossing nades, kind of feeling it out. And, I mean, if you're getting entry success at every move that you make, it's really hard to like, really you know, say what they're doing in terms of other than peeking and killing them. See what Fnatic are able to find this time around. Once again, more tempered approach. Golden taken down early, though. So an opening pick on the side of G2. And they will now be able to set up a little bit more comfortably. That is actually the Ivy presence taken out. And Jax, he's still worried about this position. But JW somehow able to find a kill onto Amanek, who is pushing into ladder late into the round. Hunter is still here at the ladder wall. And his position can be so pivotal in trying to defend any sort of Fnatic push towards outside. And it'll be a flash pit to set him up here. JW can't hit the blind shot. Hunter makes it a 4v3 advantage. What a pop flash. Uh, it's definitely going to cause problems for Fnatic. They have time though, so they have they have some options. But that push up Ivy from Jax really makes life so much more difficult now. And Flusher will show his presence towards Upper B. And Crims has actually crept out here. There's a Crims has found an opening. <laughs> he has the bomb as well. He's got 30 seconds to play with. It, this is going to have to be some of the biggest brain stuff ever to try to like to win this round. Like, how do you? Against four players, it's just so difficult. The elements of surprise will maybe be good for a kill in the plant at best. And there is that kill. And presumably, here is the plant as well. The smoke down on connector. They can't really have the timing to push that smoke. Oh, oh you can Penny. see exactly why Crimson had time to get his gun back out, but Jax is on the high ground. It's good effort from Crimson, though. Extracted two kills, got a bomb down. That's a, that's a good salvage operation. Yeah, for for what he had, <laughs> one on four coming out T mid um, was actually he got a lot done and he almost had a, a fantastic position if Jax did not get that that headshot off on him. It's so reminiscent of the round that they went B and both of the rounds that Fnatic have lost now, they've inflicted major damage and gotten bomb plants down. In terms of economic implications, that is massive in improving their chances of just running away with this half. If they're able to take this round, for example, against G2, man, G2's money is really hurting. It's in the bin, as they would say, right? Yeah. It is in the bin, yes. Ooh, okay, well, look at this drastic change of pace once again from Fnatic. Really, I think, catching off G2, but they are going to be adjusting, and Amanek able to find a forward kill. Three versus four for Fnatic now. They are on the struggle bus, it feels like, trying to regain some of the ground that they've lost through an effective defense outside from G2, who have now stabilized, I think it's fair to say, in this round. And really the most forward position is Golden, as you just saw in your screens there, from the Olofmeister position. And at this point, it's going to be quite difficult to recover. But Jax actually got caught pushing, I believe, there towards Ivy, which in a four versus three, perhaps now Jax is going to rue that effort, given that it's now a much more doable affair for Fnatic. That's a blunder from Jax. Yeah. He was trying to make the hero info play, and he had just pushed Ivy the last gun round. So to think you can get away with it a second time against Fnatic is, I mean, it's met with absurd. his Absurd. Yeah, it's an absurd <laughs> attempt. It's met with his, his demise, though. Now, 3v3 situation. Kenny S posted down this old bomb lane, and looks like it might be good for at least one kill if Brawlin moves out. And I think... Oh, Kenny misses the shot, actually, giving Brawlin some great information, along with the rest of Fnatic. And now G2, they're being choked out of this outer yard. Hunter, considering pushing the smoke, but he can't justify it. He doesn't want to make the same mistake that Jax did earlier in this round. There will be a flash to try to support him, but that just telegraphs the play. Crims swings around, taking Hunter out, and it's up to Nexa, who finds a quick headshot onto Brawlin there. And Golden playing around front bomb train now. Trying to find out when is his time to strike, but Kenny's there and waiting. Crims now. It's up to him to try to close this one out for Fnatic, and he finds the first headshot. 
looking for Kenny S yes now. Kenny S, yes, he just has a flash to work with and an op. Oh, Kenny, he's sticking to the fuse! And Crims, he won't peek out! Oh. What a veteran play from Kenny S. He knows that it's Fnatic that he's playing against. They always love to play those mind games, and he's able to do one better. Wow, that was a great little small retake by G2, but I've been impressed by Fnatic. They're finding the holes and pockets and really playing around to G2 because in the last time, G2 was always up in their face. They had all these counter nades and, and, and whatnot, but it seems to not be working this time around against, uh, against uh, Fnatic. Unfortunately for G2, though, that money is very low because that run was a lot closer than maybe it should have been uh, due to Jax's push. Jax, so he's changed position. That's a good start from him and from G2 in general as they look to make sure that they win this round with the most players alive as possible. And that may just be the case here. This is a strong spot for Kenny. Tease have found their way towards the hell position, but I don't know how much you can do from here. Indeed, nice flash. And it is all G2 at the moment on the kill feed. Wow. And that's that's a really crucial round to win because they have G2 have no money, so really needed a good round like that. That was such a great team defense from, from G2 there. The only... Where one of the only kills that was unsupported was Jax getting into pop dog position, but the last three kills were supported by Kenny S's flash or Amanek doing damage earlier to the final player. That's just great when you're on the G2 side. You're beating Fnatic as they try to make those chaotic outer pushes, and you're doing it as a team. Yeah, pop flash for your teammates is a great thing. So here we are. It's. Fnatic with a rough buy. Well, it's not a buy, sorry, it's a... Uh, JW with a hero buy. Actually, yeah, you're right, he's got the orb. <laughs> That's actually pretty awesome. It, uh, this is actually really oh. interesting. He's going to just try to contact a pick here. He's got a scope, may not realize it's an orb, but now they do. And his teammates will now be the base as they move forwards. And, well, his teammates are dying. And uh, JW's the last man standing. Does he want to save this now? It's a lot of time to try to save <laughs> this orb. Good luck. I mean, it is kind of weird, though, because the money on G2 is not amazing, so they wouldn't necessarily be super incentivized to hunt him with all this time left. But he has an AWP. They want him. They want blood. And they get it. JW stuck in the halls like a fish in a barrel. Never even had a fish in a barrel. I've never even seen a fish in a barrel. Why is it even the same? That's the, that's the idiom. Well, I guess it's not an idiom, is it, really? Because it's... Or actually, is it, it, of course it's, it is. It's an idiom. <laughs> I'm an I mean, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like all, the, all the idioms are from the 1800s. We still say today. Yeah, they're more in shipping containers now, or pretty large rectangles, I would say, for the <laughs> most part, after trawl fishing. A stitch in time saves <laughs> nine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We'll see if uh, there's any time left for Fnatic here. Ominent swinging out nicely to find one. Kennyus is there to support Brawlin, taking him back. And it's a ki it's kills all over the outer yard, and G2 come out on top. Crims and Brawlin slowly pushing on forward now, trying to find some kind of ground. Will Hunter make a misstep here? Looks like he was posturing for the aggressive play, but it doesn't look like a push on out. Jax will be the one enabled. And he's able to take down Crims, leaving, leaving Brawlin in a difficult 1v3. Oh, he's just to get one kill, and that's all he needed, because now he can play the post plant. This is going to be really interesting here. Brawlin really looking to try to make this clutch possible. That smoke actually covers his... Oh, oh my one goodness! Way, baby. He's found that one way. That is so crazy. I actually wonder. I guess that's got to be... A little lineup there, I wasn't paying attention, but Brolan is now in the one versus one. That's fantastic work, but it's next bullet wins for either of these players. Both players extremely low on health, and that bomb is ticking away. And Jax, he may have made the master stroke if he was to push all the way around, but he wouldn't have had time. He's got to go back for the plot, the, de the defuse attempt, oh. and he may not have time to actually save this, so he's going to have to fall back, and uh, indeed that nade was really close. But Brolan, what a clutch. One versus three. Picks up the first kill, has that smoke, which he can use for a one-way and also as a tool to rotate. That's just brilliance right there from him. Yeah, usually the CTs are tossing that smoke at the start of the round, trying to snipe the inside default or whatnot, but Braun does it on the 
one on three situation or one on two at this point. Oh, Hunter didn't have a chance. That's so sick. Usually you see the brawl and highlight that's just a flurry of kills in a span of a half second, and this time it's a very intelligent clutch. Hey, let's see it. It's exactly what Fnatic needed. The totem pole drop almost gets three Amanek. That was very, very painful for Fnatic. At least they managed to, to actually trade that kill, but that was really scary. Flush is up on the train here by all of my. So we'll have to see if he's able to find something from this. If he can get another kill, that's going to really create a lot of pressure for G2 to deal with. And he is just out there. G2 have really contracted their defense enormously. And if maybe he had a, an AK-47 there, perhaps that would have been a kill. Regardless, Fnatic will set their sights towards this B-bomb site as the bomb also ferries its way across through the halls. JW deep up sidewalk. He's been spotted now by one of those players from G2 jump spotting. Looks like that was Kenny. Oh, JW just pushes on forward, and he creates a lot of space for Fnatic. They'll be able to find a bomb plant off of this, but they have no more utility left, so it'll just be gun work for them. JW doesn't expect that position. Nexa, good for two there, and Crims unable to find anything on top of that. Nice recovery there from G2 off the back of a great opener from Amanek. That was crazy. If only Crims had actually like pushed this slightly further and seen that frag that he had available, I think Fnatic win the round because because then Crims uh, then then uh, whoever it was doesn't get to kill two of his teammates. Yeah, I also like the move by Fnatic as taken inside. They flashed JW uh, towards that lower, but as soon it looked like Fnatic w uh, wanted to hit back outside, but as soon as JW said that there's no one pretty much inside up close. I think that's when they decide they want to go back to the lower bomb site. Unfortunately, though, they couldn't hold the post plant. It's been outshot by Nexa and the crew. Well, it's a pretty close half, 6-6. Six, six. Ooh, JW managed to win that battle with the AK. Five versus four for Fnatic to play off of. And you can see that there is a response from G2 now. They need to do something, and they've decided to take forward control of T-Main. A lot of information also poses quite a problem for Fnatic. If they were to try to go outside. Well, that's a close one. Oh, Kenny's so quick. And that's the Lurk dead. Oh my goodness, Flush has found so much space. Yeah, G2 really hedged their bets on this round. There's no one even at this B-bomb site. Kenius rotated in, but he's not going to expect how close Flusha is at this point. Will it even matter, though, is really the question. G2 not in a great position to try to retake this one, but it looks like they're still going for it. Flush is able to take down Nexa, and Omnic, quick on the flank, and Hall's actually is finding Brawl and looking for more. JW with the pre-fire, able to make that work. <laughs> And Hunter finds the trade. Two on two situation. And this has actually become suddenly very doable for G2. Kenny S will be coming from CT spawn. Hunter winning a, such an important duel against Flusha. And it leaves just Crims. There isn't much time left that he has to deal with. And he will find the spray on a Hunter. That's going to do it. Fnatic are able to find their seventh round in this one here. And yeah, that push from, Fl from Fnatic was just so good. I'm surprised G2 even actually went for that round. They, uh... They had lost so much space so quickly. Yeah, Flusher is a space invader. And it's actually kind of a weird situation because so many players died from both teams that the buy kind of sucks for Fnatic in terms of the lack of an AWP. They've got, have to, they have to buy Galil's as a MAC-10. There's only two AKs. And we've got actually the weaponry. Oh, actually, it's pretty decent from G2. I expected it to be slightly worse, but they have spent all of their money. So... This is this is like a buy one, get one free kind of rounds for the team that wins it. Jax makes his way to defend Ladder Room, and he will be able to keep hold of it for now. But at, in the meantime, we have got Golden in that Olaf Meister position, so... As I feel like this will be tough for Fnatic. They just don't have great firepower in this round. Yeah, the utility favors G2 as well. This is such a op big opening kill. And neither player is able to find the other. Omnic, though, is able to secure this space. Now backs off. And he's still... Oh, he only has a decoy. Hmm. Golden's in a great position towards Olaf still. This may be able to find a single kill. But actually, Hunter, swinging into Tcon, looks that direction and clears that space out. Now Fnatic 
They're pushed back so far. A desperate attempt from Brolin to gain some ground back. Now it's going to be Flusha who tries to find some space, but Amanek is there to meet and greet him, leaving just JW and Crims. <laughs> just Crims. <laughs> Train is such a hard map when you you need to get at least like one C, like kill on a CT. It just makes so much of a difference. That one kill allows you to ha find openings, but without it, everything is covered. Yeah. It's so difficult to try to breach into the round late like that. Fnatic just didn't have the same kind of utility to cause any sort of misdirection from G2 and just couldn't take that space away. And that's exactly when G2 thrive, when you just give them everything that they want, when you have that player in ladder, when you have secure of the IV position, and they can fall back into those setups that they're so hard to dislodge from. And I gotta say, you know, even though it looks like Fnatic, you know, they're in a desperate situation here on the pistols for the last round of the first half, they still have seven rounds on their T side. That's pretty good. We'll see what, what they can do here. Nexa looking to defend this with the M4. Trying to track for the spray, but it is difficult. There's jumping players moving so quickly into the site. Jax, though, speaking of which... Oh, I thought he was going to have a timing hit, but Flusher with the anti lurk <laughs> And now it's a 4v3 in favor of the Swedes. Perhaps they can do it after all. I mean, I will make life a little bit easier, but it's still going to be quite tough. Oh, this position at Z, though, from Krims. It should be at least good for one. No. He isn't able to find anything. Hunter swinging around, takes him out, leaving just Golden and Flusha. Golden right there at default. Needs to get it done with the Deagle. Will he be able to find anything? No. G2, quick and simple. And with that said, we'll see who can come out on top in the second half of the first map after the break. You're almost on Dan level now. Okay, we're in two second half. This is the first map between G2 Esports and Fnatic. And as Maui Snake said earlier, this match is super important for these teams. In particular, Fnatic, they need that RMR. They need it. And they had a pretty good T side, but now it's up to G2 to do just as well, if not better, if they want to win this map. And they're going to go for that B play, so standard. To see something like this, and pretty passive from Fnatic, they want to allow a quick entry to the B-side if that's the choice of G2, and there they go. Great scaling from G2 here, taking so much space so quickly, enabled by those folks, and oh, Omenek jumping up on top is able to find two quick kills, <laughs> making this such a difficult retake already. JW and Brawlin, they're already shut out of this round. They don't have any utility to work with, but they'll still attempt it, it looks like. JW posturing towards CT, actually... All right, they're going to back off. Looks like it'll just be a save. Take that armor to the next round. Holy moly, that was such a good pistol by G2. Even though it was an inside take, the routes, the smokes, the timing of everything was so perfect. I'm going to have to steal that one. The conviction from Amanek did it for me. Yeah. His, the jump up to Z, usually at some point you're just gonna you going to post up on that Z train just right behind it, try to buy time for the rest of the round, but getting right in the faces of Fnatic was something that they did not expect. Yeah, that's a plan. That, you can tell that he, he knew he was going to hop up there at the start of the round, most likely. It just He was just rushing. He was gunning. Look at him. Yeah, this is really cool because that smoke is is like deep enough too that you can <laughs> kind of have like clear vision of exactly what he's doing with that movement. It's really nice. It's nice. Nice. And uh, that's a really important win for G2. And that means that we you know, traded pistol rounds evenly between these two teams. Three scouts. I love that. Three scouts, two HEs, a FAMAS on Brolan. Let's go. FAMAS. That's, uh, this is going to be really interesting to see what Fnatic can do with this. Because with three scouts too, if the opening doesn't go too well, you can just, just save those into the next round. It's very deadly. And top of that, G2 has four MAC-10s. So it's not like the range is going to be helpful, even though they don't have body armor as CT for the most part. Well, two plays don't. Uh, into the B side they go. Quick tag. Ooh, Flusher looking for another one. HE will whiff, but doesn't matter. He's found the kill anyway. And the FAMAS, the single FAMAS, 
in no. the perfect position. That's exactly where they needed it. And now this is getting really sketchy here for G2. Great damage done. Another scout shot found onto Hunter. Nexa is... Oh my god, Nexa has to do so much and he's doing so much with that MAG-10. Keeping the round alive here, Hunter. Also trying to assist from Sidewalk there. Their combined effort may just be enough to win this one. Flusher with the USP. And that might be enough here against the first oh! and the second. <laughs> That's so insane. And the clutch is has for Fnatic. What a crazy round. Oh, wow. That was... <laughs> I was getting a little worried from Fnatic because they had that... They had three people just right on the other side of that smoke looking for spots and not really spreading out on the map to to actually see where G2 might have been in the bomb site and Max almost had a hero round right there but Flush just turns around with his wow that that's so pivotal that's so important oh man this game it's delivering G2 Going to force up into it, though. They want to keep pressuring this Fnatic economy. Interested to see what kind of play they have in store for us here. With four smokes, already using one. It looks like they're favoring this B-bomb site once again. Will be will Fnatic be ready for it? It's just going to be flushing. He has a lot of utility to work with, but a lot of Kyurus as well. And he's instantly taken out by Hunter there. Fnatic, once again, have to retake the B-bomb site. And the smokes are out already. There's so much space being taken from G2, but Brawlin's taking it back. Two FAMAS kills, and it's just Jackson Nexa. This is a really scary situation for them. Jackson with the MAC-10, oh, he's down so low. He's got nowhere to go. He's stuck. So stuck. <laughs> he's just dead. And now it's up to Nexa with that AK-47. They know exactly where he is, and he has no utility to assist him in his efforts. He's going to have to hit some really ridiculous shots to make this possible as they wait for him. And he's actually managed to somehow creep out, but there is the defuse. I don't know if he's aware of this. Oh, he actually knows. Oh. He's able to stop. Oh, did he not stop that in time? He didn't. That's so insane. Nexa gets both kills, and he was just a millisecond too late. That's, that's unlucky. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. No kidding. Oh, that's got to feel so frustrating. I wondered at first if he didn't realize that they were on the defuse, but he, yeah, I'm not sure he, he then started it. spamming it as though he did know, but... He, he probably just thought it was a fake. He was mm. he was looking as if he expected a peek around that smoke there, and once again, though, G2, they have a decision to make. Do they want to keep pressuring this Fnatic economy? These rounds have been so close that I couldn't blame them. They know that they can break Fnatic's economy so with just one round victory. But it doesn't l quite look like it. Maybe they'll just be using the hero AK from Nexa. Yeah. It is crazy because it's just as you say, like it, it, there is a world where it makes a lot of sense for them to force buy completely here. And then if you do force buy, one of the, there's like a, the couple options you're thinking of is outside or inner, but because you don't have as much firepower as you want, you probably be thinking about inner. But the reason why they may not choose to go for the full, fully committed force buy is that inner has actually not worked out for them in quite a few rounds. Fnatic have managed to retake. Oh. So, and that's that's a terrible start for sure. But Kenny S is going to recover this AK. No armor though, so aim punch is a real thing. Oh, that's a very <laughs> nice nade. Especially since it's on the only player with armor left. That's that's so big from Golden there. Doesn't have any more utility though to try to stop these players from approaching from Ivy. And it looks like this is what G2 is favoring in this round here. They only have a smoke to work with, so we'll likely just smoke that left side, back haul off, and then try to scale towards the outer yard. Or maybe they have some tricks up their sleeve. I think if G2, I mean, they want to win the round, but I think the goal is just to get as many kills as possible to keep whittling down the CT money. They're going to try to stick together here. This is perfect from Golden. Like, it doesn't matter that you don't get the kills. It's all about just having your teammates in a right, in a good position to deal with where the teeth are coming from. So you don't need to take uh, an aggressive, committed spot uh, play there. And that's a good nade, doing more damage. And now the teeth will burst onto the site, but you can see that everyone from Fnatic's ready for this. And they, they don't lose a single player. And I think that, that's a good example, again, of just... There is... Kills are not the only valuable thing. Having a good spot for a kill is not the only valuable thing. It's like, think about nuke as, as well. Like, if so, if they're rushing ramps, like, you couldn't give up ramp and your teammates rotate correctly and you still have the advantage overall to get the kills. 
I think that's another good example of that, how Golden played that. Yeah, don't be scared to retake. Don't be scared of giving up spots to secure rotation routes. Very important to secure the rotation routes. It makes it so much easier for a person coming inside. They don't have to check eight extra angles. You know what I mean? That adds up to time in the post plants. Oh, Flusha. He's such a menace towards this inner bomb site with this MP9. And he's still going to hold his ground. This may be unexpected, but Hunter is still able to find that kill. Golden, quick to trade it though. And this is a great advantage for Fnatic in round 20. That, that's just such a perfect way to play it. Just the way that, as you say, like Flusher holds his ground and then they create a bait setup with a player that's almost dead already. So it's, Flusher wouldn't have had really much value at all later in the round. But in that precise moment, he secures another kill, making it a 4v3, and his teammate gets to keep all of his health. So that's actually by far the best play possible in that moment. And it's, it's just so great to see that level of play. I'm just happy to see Flush on MP9 again on inside. Because, you know, the M4, that one go around, didn't cut it. You need an <laughs> MP9, not, not an M4. Yeah, exactly. It is his gun of choice, it seems. <laughs> it's always it's always <laughs> Flusher that's just, just I don't know, he, he's the guy that's going to buy the weird weapons or the, the off-meta guns. He's a thinker, outside the box. Not that the MP9 is off-meta, but it's definitely off-meta to buy an MP9 when you can afford a M4. <laughs> <laughs> is that guess yeah. what? That's the... <laughs> All right, Amanek able to find one, opening up this B site, but Crims is quick to respond, leaving just Jax and Nexa, and Brolin just pushes on forward, doesn't even allow the plant. Jax, he has to try to find something here, but Crims is so quick to take him out. That was just Fnatic having all the information there. They had three players towards that B bomb site, and when G2 exec, there was really nothing they could do at that point. And you know, I think it's for me, it's it's really interesting seeing just how, again, in this matchup previously against G2, Fnatic really did struggle to find comfort. It felt like a lot of a lot of small things were going wrong. They were a little bit disconnected here and there. They couldn't win the clutches, and now we're seeing a a much more honest representation of the Fnatic lineup strength. So I think G2 should have caught a, a timeout. Even though it's not a gun round, you still see people in spawn buying stuff, talking about it. I mean, I guess they're using the site round as a timeout, I guess. Which teams will do if they slow it down, talk about what they want to do in the next gun round. This is the Zeus approach of just kind of throwing away an eco in the sense that you don't take any ground to start and just tell everyone, hey, let's just talk about this. Let's just think about it. It's a, it's a cool leadership tactic that it seems like Nexa may have adopted for his own team. And that's pretty interesting, given that Nexa is definitely not as experienced as Zeus, yet maybe is using some of his tactics to try to be a, not only a good in-game leader, but a captain. And on top of that as well, I think it's, it's, it's worth mentioning, one of the other uh, benefits of doing this in the past was that teams would be much more uh, liberal with throwing their utility on the defensive side in this instance. But you can see that teams started to learn that part of the reason that teams slow things down on Nico like this is to burn the CT utility and do that kind of light economic damage. And so teams have gotten really good at, in their minds having that protocol of it, most of the time, we're, we're going to wait to see something before we toss our nades. Yeah, Fnatic's one of those teams that waits. They're very disciplined a lot of times with their nades. It's span, look, it's 20 seconds left. Look at what well, you see a lot more in the last 10 yeah, seconds. They, they just, yeah, they just tossed everything, just yeah. as you said that. <laughs> yeah, it's it, but they keep it for so long. It's well, 10 seconds left, obviously. Wow. They never want to kill each other. A little bit. One kill off of gold, golden. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Game. It would have been really interesting if Crims just backed off that fight and Flusher in the site backed off it as well and just leave that guy with a deagle. Don't let him get that loss bonus. That would have been oh yeah, kind of next level, especially since there were only, I want to say, four seconds left there. You couldn't even get to the bomb site so, and and get any type of plan. If you just let him let him go, it's just going to completely ruin G2's game plan moving forward. That being said, it, it didn't happen, so no need to further speculate. This round here, Jax going for an early outside pick, but man, he's tagged down already, just 16 health. Has to use that smoke to try to get out. And it doesn't look like G2's early options are being given to them here. Uh, 
It's a, it's a really dangerous peak. That one is. That's, a, that's one of those spots that's just really tough. People can pre fire that spot, do significant damage through that thin wall that you're jiggling from. And looks like a straight up set piece onto the B side, but given that Fnatic already has seemed to have amazing positions to rotate for the flank and everything else with pop control. This is going to be really tough, I think, for G2, especially with some of these positions, more forward ones. Crim's there trying to grab around, but he's unable to find the engagement he needs wow. in time. So G2 definitely coming out the better on this one, doing a good job so far. Quick kill through the smoke might make things a little bit easier here for Fnatic. And the bomb is going to go down a little bit delayed here. And Nexus is going to be on fire, has to jump out towards oil. Oh, oh he manages to wow. get a kill after jumping away. That's nuts. And that's, that's it. Fnatic call it. G2 have done an excellent job so in this round. I, so I want to point out that G2 is kind of head up at the inside bomb site. They've been, as, as we've seen before, they've been like tossing these deep smokes in Z and in bomb lane. And I think that's pretty good against Fnatic's um, kind of style, um, where they have a, a person kind of pushed up and inside, kind of almost waiting for his teammates at, at Z and whatnot. So these smokes will push back the rotators, but will kind of put the inside bombsite person in a bad spot, kind of isolate from the, the rest of the team you saw right there. Karim's had to push up towards the bomb train. And then the T's were allowed to just kind of rotate behind them through the bomb lane because of how deep the smokes were. It's a little, little fun little thing. I think something that also enabled that is all the spam damage that Flesha took as he was jiggling there mm -hmm. because it forced Crims to play the closer spot at B and when that exec comes out maybe, not saying guaranteed, that, I mean that was a great exec from G2 but there's a possibility that Flesha reads that and is, because he has so much more experience in that position and the fact that Crims gets caught off guard not even looking the right way is indicative that, you know, maybe he wasn't quite ready for that exec and to be in that position as it commences. So, and it's a really, it's really cool to see that G2 managed to win a round like that because it does create a lot of problems here. It really adds a lot of tension in this matchup. Fnatic's economy, you know, they they, they spend more or less everything. It's just JW who has three thousand dollars and Crims has two thousand dollars, but everybody else is fairly broke. And similarly for G2, they're also not in a good place economically speaking. So th this is a huge round for one of these two teams to win. And we've had a lot of rounds like with this this much pressure on them. And the Nades game is looking pretty good here, and it's a pretty aggressive attack coming from Fnatic going quite far forward on Ivy. Almost looked like Golden wanted to push the smoke for a second there. <laughs> Bit questionable, but but uh, yeah, that smoke Ivy sometimes looks like it's not much, but if a team wanted to default and have something Ivy, it just messes up their timings quite a lot. So you can see, I don't know if that was the idea from G2, but if it was, they would have to abandon it. And it looks like they may go for the same round as before, but just with a, quite a delay. Yeah, G2's game plan has been really apparent on this seaside. It's been all inner, all day. It, it, they're barely even keeping Fnatic honest towards the outside, but it looks like might be a slightly drier approach. Not as many smokes this time, and they won't need it. Nexa, able to take down Crims on the side. Flusha, still holding his ground in the back lanes, is able to find Jax, and he needs to maintain this space for his team if they want to have any chance to retake this. Oh, good spam from Flusha to find Hunter there, looking for more. And now the retake is on. Fnatic may have been considering it prior to this, but that kill will force their hand. Flash to try to help. Fnatic move forward, but Nexa is going to be playing in the smoke against Flusha, and Flusha will come out on top. Kenny S is able to find the return, and Omnic on a big flank right now. Oh, this is so big! He's able to find the kill on a Brolin, but JW has taken out Kenny S on the bomb site. He's going to be sticking the bomb. Can Omnic get to him in time? The spam is coming out, oh! and the defuse will finish. Fnatic able to steal one there. Oh, what a huge steal that is. That's so, so nasty. G2, I mean, the consolation of getting the bomb down is going to be pretty helpful, but my god, that was down to the wire. That flank from Amanek here, just slightly not... I mean, he got there in time, it's just... How many bullets does he have in the gun here? Because he, he ran out, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. got 14 bullets, the full spray. Oh, oh. oh that's really painful. <laughs> that's really painful for Amanek. That, oh. that was such a pivotal round, too. If Fnatic had lost that, their money would just 
be in the doldrums. Yeah, they would be so screwed. What a what a close game. Imagine if you're Amonex teammates there and you're just like you're all dead and you're watching him try to make that work. That's just, <laughs> that, that must be so stressful. <laughs> Hands on your face just holding just hold just holding your breath, hoping. We've had a lot of timeouts too. That's also a pretty cool sign because I th I feel like the timeouts have added a lot in terms like it, the timeouts are honest in what's really happening in the game. There are these actual pivotal moments that are consistently happening and the team out, team uh, the the teams are respecting that and taking timeouts to help them deal with it, which I know Eric you're, you're proud of. Yeah, I like timeouts. I like when teams use it and Kenny just gets spammed through the wall right there. JW, Golden and Amnick take each other out. And now it's three on three in a flash of an outside take. The two's gonna be playing the bomb. I'm trying to. And just like you said before, Alex, it's been seldom that G2 have actually managed to make their way outside. And they do find a plant here, but it is not looking too favorable in terms of the numbers. And there's three smokes remaining on Fnatic because this push was so fast. And that will be very helpful, especially given that we have an AWP on Kenny S. Well, that said, Amanek will find a nice pick towards Connector. And this may be troubling now. This not much time left. They have to get on this defuse pretty much just now. They have to get on the defuse. There's still two teams left alive. Nice shot, Amanek, just before the flash comes in. And they don't, Fnatic do not manage to find a way to retake. Yeah, it's fortunate. They were running out of time. And they're taking their time in, uh, in terms of, of, of the retake that allowed Amanek to get some kills while reposition himself. That's the unfortunate part. Fnatic was looking pretty good on the retakes, but in that round... Just a little too slow, and maybe at the wrong time, P and Z first. Of course, they they don't know that. Yeah, that's just a great position for Mominek. Uh, yeah. They, you don't expect a guy to be playing around that bomb train in such a fashion. It's it's so exposed to multiple angles. If anyone ever came up IV, he would have been shot right in the side of the head. And a little bit lucky, actually, for Mominek there, but got to give him some credit because he knew that, he probably knew that Fnatic also still had a lot of utility. Looks like it'll be a pretty dry hit outside, though. Hunter trying to find something. There's this lone op from JW, and it looks like it's securing the box hall position, so this should be a pretty clean anti-eco beyond that op for G2. Just making their way onto the bomb site. Smoke's covering a lot of these angles out. Might see some kind of play through the smoke from Brawl in here. No one is able to set him up with a flash, so it's going to be up to just him, and he's not able to find the kill. That might do it in this round for Fnatic. JW would love to keep this gun moving forward, but he... Oh, wow. Oh, no. JW <laughs> doing JW. Thinks he's able to take down oh! Omenic, and he finds Jax as well. Looking for more, but Hunter does take him down. It's all up to Hunter in the 1v3, and he can't find that final kill. Wow. Oh, I can't believe they just won that. That's so I mad. Can't believe they just won that. It's absolutely mad. <laughs> oh, JW, what a god. This is going to be so close as well on the defuse, oh, but just enough it. time for that. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought JW was going to just keep rolling through them as well once he once he got going. But that what a what a crazy round. There's so many been so many amazing rounds in this game so far. That's so <laughs> beautiful just absolutely outplaying Amanek creating just enough of a, a delay just a moment that Flusher could take down Nexa. And then <laughs> then running out of bullets on Ebo. It's just it's craziness. This game is really going down to the wire. What an exciting matchup. Full buy for both teams, somehow. And we'll <laughs> see <laughs> what G2 can do this time. Maybe going back to that B. There's B hits. As you said, Alex, they've really been focusing on this bomb site. Yeah, this is definitely... Uh, it's been back and forth for them. Seems like they've been very successful at getting that space inside. It's just been a matter of can they protect the retake. Flusher, though, he doesn't even want to try to retake this time. Pushing forward with the MP9, of course. Able to do so much damage. Now, Golden right here on the bomb site Should be able to find Jax, oh, but oh, no. Jax is able to recover. Takes him down. But such low HP on these G2 players. They do find the plant, but there's still a Molly from Fnatic, and that's going to find so much damage. Oh, oh down to just two HP is Nexa. And oh, no. the, he's forced into another one there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe he's able to survive for so long. But Jax still here on default. 
trying to make it happen, but Crims is able to take him down. It's just Hunter, and he only has 8 HP, and Brolin instantly deletes him from the server. Very nice stuff from Fnatic. <laughs> that was so close. <laughs> yeah, that's <he's> just <laughs> sweating. <laughs> All over the bomb site. Fnatic, I like, there's so many close, it's just marginal situations, and Fnatic are just like pulling ahead, just barely. So there's so many, there's been so many moments where it just could so very easily have been won by G2. It's like lost like millisecond defuses, like spamming for, through smokes, just so many crazy moments, some great clutches. Uh, that Brolan one versus three, for example, just so many moments here, and. Well, Fnatic could be walking away with Train in the back if they're able to continue their success here. Still a good situation on the buy for G2. And they're going to go fast here. Hunter outside already through to Sandwich to try to create some pressure. There's some good awareness from Brolan. Also, not going to get the kill, but does some significant damage there. Resmoking to keep slowing down these teams, but Hunter's going to wrap around Hell. Oh no, they don't seem to realize Crims goes down. And that will cause immense problems right now. Brolan having to do a lot from the bomb site. But he's got help, and that is working out quite nicely, it would appear. And there we have it. 16 to 11. It was close, but G2 just ran out of gas towards the end of this one. Fnatic did what they needed to, and they picked up the first map, the opening map in this best of three series here. And G2, well, they will be moving on to a map that's perhaps more comfortable, but this is a strong way to start things for Fnatic. Yeah, very good. I mean, it's hard to... I don't know if you want to talk about after after the break. We'll yeah, we'll, uh, break. we'll talk about after the break. Let's, we can have a couple little thoughts, and then we'll then we'll get <laughs> we'll get over there. Uh, Come on, Eric. Uh, I was... I mean, it's you could probably watch this a lot and find, like, these small things, what they could have done a bit better. But I think the thing that was really apparent is the post-plant um, situations with Fnatic. They're just... I think they won All almost right. every post-plant. We'll talk like more that. about the small things after the break. After the break. 